Hey guys, this one we're going to do a uh, lesson on conjugate roots, which conjugates, remember, it's just where you change the ending of it. Um, we'll have an example here in a second. So we're going to practice multiplying conjugate factors together and then talk about the conjugate root theorem because they tie together and it makes it pretty easy. So first, uh, multiplying conjugate factors, There's a you can just multiply everything out, which means multiply the x. Um, you would have to first distribute this negative and that negative. You'd multiply the x to everything. You'd multiply the negative 2 to everything. You'd multiply the negative i to everything and combine all those like terms. And it is messy because you get a lot of terms and you have to combine like terms and it just gets crazy. It is way, way, way easier if you apply this little shortcut right here. So first... We're just going to multiply out that negative. And um, quick refresher, reminder, conjugates. You just change that sign in the middle. 2 plus i, 2 minus i, those are conjugates. But once we multiply out that negative like we did, we first just look at this first part, this x minus 2 and x minus 2. That is a 2. It's just poorly written. We are first going to multiply those together because when we have this pattern, these are conjugates here as well. We're just going to relook at them a little bit differently. There's a minus, there's a plus, so the ending changes. So we're looking at the first term as being x minus 2, even though it's x minus 2, it's two terms. We're going to consider that just that first term. And that's conjugate with negative i and positive i. Those are conjugate factors that we're multiplying together. So, the first thing we do when we're multiplying conjugates is we multiply the fronts, and then you just multiply the backs. And that's all you have to do. So when we multiply the fronts, we get x minus 2 times x minus 2. So that's x minus 2 squared. And then we get negative i times positive i, which would be negative i squared when we multiply the backs. x minus 2 squared, that should be something that you are pretty good at multiplying out. You've probably done it a lot of times. Um, when it's perfect squares, you get x squared minus, in the middle you just get negative 4x. And then negative 2 times negative 2 would be positive 4 at the end there. Multiplying out your squareds. And then minus i squared. Uh, i squared is negative 1, so that's minus negative 1, which is plus 1, which means our final answer here is x squared minus 4x plus 5. We're going to do the same thing here. We distribute that negative. And it's quite possible that you can kind of distribute that negative, keep track of that in your head. And then we're multiplying the x minus 6 to the x minus 6, which would be x squared minus 12x plus 36. And then negative 5i, positive 5i, that's going to be a negative 25i squared i squared is negative 1, so that turns to plus 25, which means we get x squared minus 12x plus 51. Sorry, that should be 61. So here's a whole bunch of what those could be, um, multiplying out conjugate factors like that. We're going to do enough practice. I don't think we need to do all these extra ones here, but just they all have conjugates. They're all x minus conjugates. So um, let's skip ahead a little bit. So we're going to now look at 
um, when we're given one root like we were in the previous lesson, but this time it's going to be a conjugate or a um, complex root with imaginary numbers in it. So whenever we have a complex root, they always happen with their conjugate. So that's what this is saying up here. If a plus bi is a root, then a minus bi is also a root. They happen in conjugate pairs. They go together. They happen together. So for this problem, that means that if 1 plus 3i is a root, then 1 minus 3i is also a root. So then we're going to write them out like we had before in the beginning of these notes. So we would write it out x minus the root, and then x minus its conjugate root. They have to write them both out. And now when you distribute that negative, you get negative 1 plus 3i and negative 1 minus 3i, which I was starting to use a shortcut before I showed it to you. That's why I wrote the parentheses on here. So now this would be minus 1 plus 3i, this would be minus 1 minus 3i, so it's basically like they just change from one to the other when you multiply out the negative. So this is it multiplied out, uh, distributed rather. So now we're going to multiply using our little trick that we just talked about in the previous notes, or the previous page. x minus 1 times x minus 1 And then negative 3i plus 3i will be negative 9i squared, which is plus 9. Add that together, you get 10. So now, since we know that that is our um, two of our roots are contained in that polynomial now, we can divide by that to figure out what is left of the original polynomial. And now, here's the bad news. You can never do synthetic division with this um, because it's got the x squared in it. So, you have to do long division. So, we will. Good review of long division also before the test, so that's fine. So when we divide, remember we divide the fronts. 2x to the fourth divided by x squared would be 2x squared. Then we multiply it back. We distribute it. That's 2x to the fourth minus 4 x cubed plus 20 x squared. So divide, distribute, now we subtract cancels out, we get 1 x cubed that's negative 8 And then I like to write everything again, bring it all down. Some people just bring down the next thing or wait. I like to bring it all down. So now we are going to start over. We're going to divide again. So x cubed divided by x squared, that's x. Then we multiply that back. Distribute. Remember our steps are divide, distribute, subtract. All 
All right, so we distribute, and now we subtract. So change that, change that, and change that. So we get, that's an eight. Negative eight plus two is negative six. 22 minus 10, that's 12. And then we're gonna bring down that negative 60. Now we start over. Now this should not leave us with a remainder at all because these were roots. So remember, roots don't have remainders. Roots go in perfect. They have zero remainder because they are zeros. So we divide negative 6x squared divided by x squared is negative 6. So now when we multiply back that negative 6, and subtract everything should cancel out. So now you can see these are exactly the same because so that's good because when we subtract we're going to get no remainder like we said. So 2x squared plus x minus 6 is our answer. So we divide it. This has this is what's left of our um, original polynomial, once we divide it off the two roots that we knew, 2x squared plus x minus 6. And now we're going to determine the remaining roots that are part of this equation. And we can do that by factoring. Um, if we're going to factor, I would multiply the front to the back. Get negative 12. Two numbers that multiply to be negative 12 add to be 1 here in the middle. That would be 4 and negative 3. So we will split the middle term. And do factor by grouping. Got the negative 3, x plus 2. So that's 2x minus 3. And x plus 2 are the factors. Which means x equals negative 2. And uh, solving that out, we would have 2x equals 3. Then we can divide by 3, and we get x equals 3 over 2. So we get 3 halves, negative 2, and then our conjugate pairs pair, which was 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i. So I'm going to write the answers in braces, um, least to greatest, and I'll usually just put the complex roots at the end. So negative 2 goes first, then 3 halves, and then we had 1 minus 3i, 1 plus 3i. I'm going to write them together as plus or minus, and there's our four roots. If we had a multiplicity, I would write that out here too, but there's all your roots. And there is four of them because it was an x to the fourth equation to begin with.
All right, let's take a look at another one. Um, the irrational roots and complex roots, no matter what, they're going to happen with their conjugate. That's all this is saying. So it doesn't matter if they're imaginary or um, irrational. So the conjugate root is going to be 4 minus 5 squared to 3. Then we're going to multiply them out. The same trick still works. So it's going to be x minus 4 plus 5 squared to 3. And x minus 4 minus 5 squared to 3. And we're going to multiply those together. Remember, we take x minus 4 as like one piece. x minus 4 times x minus 4. So that's going to be negative 8x plus 16. And then when we multiply the back, negative 25, and then square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. So that's negative 75. So, like I said, negative 75 plus 16 to combine like terms. Um, 75 minus 16 is 59. Now, the directions on this equation just said find a quadratic equation, so x squared, leading coefficient of 1, which it has. If it said leading coefficient of 2, you would just multiply every term here by 2 or something like that, if that ever happened. Uh, multiply each term by 2. So that's it, because it had to be a, a quadratic with leading coefficient of 1, so that's it. We don't have to divide to find any other root, because they're... That's not what it's asking. All right, so we're going to find this uh, polynomial equation multiplied out. Now, first thing you have to observe with it is it has a complex root, 4 minus i, which means it's conjugate. 4 plus i is also a root. So if 0 is a root, that means one of the factors would be just x. Negative 3 means x plus 3 would be a factor. Positive 3 means x minus 3 would be a factor. And then these two roots mean it's going to be x minus 4 minus i and x minus 4 plus i. And now we're going to multiply all of this out. That's what it says, multiplied out. So choose what you're going to multiply together first. I would do things that I'm good at multiplying, like x plus 3, x minus 3 is x squared minus 9. If you multiply the x to those, you get x to the third minus 9x. And then when we multiply these two, we can use our trick we talked about that we've been doing all these notes x minus 4 times x minus 4 is going to be x squared minus 8x plus 16. And then negative i and positive i is negative i squared, which is plus 1. So that turns into plus 1 to 16 is 17. And then we have to multiply these together and that's our last step. So you can do the box method, um, you can just distribute and combine like terms, it's up to you um, and how you're going to multiply it out. Let's see, this time I will do, I'm just going to distribute because there's only two terms here. So x cubed gets distributed to each of these. So that's x to the fifth minus 8x to the fourth plus 17x cubed. And then we'll distribute the negative 9x. And again, as long as, um, if you line up, if nothing's missing, if you line up our first thing that we multiply out, all your like terms will match up. 
So negative 9x times x squared is an x cubed. So line it up with the other x cubed. It's going to be negative 9x cubed. And then finish distributing. There won't be any more like terms because nothing's going to line up, but that's okay. That's positive 72x and then negative 9 times 17. So that's going to be 90 plus 63. 153 and there's an X on that. Combine your like terms and we're all done. Seventeen minus nine is eight. Got a mistake here because um, these can't be like terms. I multiply the 9x to the x, I forgot to say squared. That's all. All right, so let's take a look at how you can check this. Um, in On your Casio, Casios do this super nicely. If you go into equation solver, um, we want polynomial, F2. And we're going to just type in our answer that we just got, which was a fifth degree. And we can just type those coefficients. So the first one is nine, sorry, one. Then negative eight. And positive eight. And positive 72 negative 153 and then we have this extra spot which would be for our constant term and there isn't one so there will be a zero there so that's perfect so we hit solve and it will show us your roots now you're probably looking at that and you say well that's only three we got three zero and negative three we're missing those complex roots with the i's in it that we started with and you're right that's a setting that you need to turn on so we had um, got to go back it up at least one step. So I just hit exit one time. And now we're going to go to setup. So I'm going to press shift. Setup. And we need to turn on this complex mode right here. Right now it says real. That's why it only showed us our real number answers. We need to turn on complex mode to A plus BI. And press solve again, and now we'll get complex roots. Whoops, I had it and it went away. Here it is. 3, 0, negative 3, and then 4 plus i, 4 minus i. It even shows you your complex roots perfectly like that. So that's our check, just making sure we had the same ones that we started with, which means we multiplied it correctly. That's all. So here's another example, just using what I just showed you to check to check your work. If it says find the roots using a calculator, that's all you're going to do. You're just going to type it in. So we need a uh, fourth degree. So let's back it up. Fourth degree. Type in our coefficients of 2, negative 17, 137, whoops, 137, negative 57, and negative 65. Solve. And since we still have complex mode on, it shows us perfectly. Also, if you have a decimal, if you scroll down to it, it will, um, if you have an upgraded calculator like this one, 98, 60, or above, it'll change it to a fraction for you right there. So, uh, we should have some roots here. We have it was an x to the fourth. Oh, that was weird. It wasn't showing the bottom one, but then I scrolled down and it was. Um, so there's our four roots. There should be four because it's x to the fourth. I see all four, so I'm going to write them down. 
it's negative one half and one and when you write them if you want to put your uh, conjugate roots together that's totally fine four plus or minus seven i there's our roots using a calculator super super easy just make sure you have complex mode turned on and that's it um, go ahead and complete your homework and then this was the last lesson so then we're going to start working on the review next and prepare for a test over all this stuff uh, post your comments and questions and get your work submitted see you next time